judge has just put the kibosh on the NRA's attempt to avoid its legal trouble by filing for bankruptcy in order to flee the state of New York for gun-friendly Texas. That means that the NRA will actually have to deal with allegations from the New York Attorney General's office of just mind-blowing corruption at the organization. And given the revelations that came out during the bankruptcy trial, the gun lobby is actually in a far weaker place today than it was just several months ago. Here is everything you need to know about the NRA's latest legal troubles. First, let's start with some context. So back in August of 2020, the New York Attorney General, Tish James, filed suit to dissolve the NRA. She argued that it severely violated state laws governing how nonprofit tax-exempt organizations can operate. She alleged that Wayne LaPierre and other top gun lobby leaders were using membership dues to charter private jets for families members, secure sweetheart deals and contracts for friends, and pay each other tens of thousands of dollars for doing nothing at all. And in January of 2021, the NRA decided that it would respond to this lawsuit by filing for bankruptcy in order to leave the state of New York, where it had been incorporated since 1871, and move down south. But of course, that's not what it told the court. Its explanation for filing for bankruptcy actually evolved over time. Initially, the gun lobby claimed that it was filing for bankruptcy because of the cost of ongoing legal challenges. Its lawyer even told the bankruptcy judge that the NRA was facing death by a thousand cuts. But publicly, the NRA claimed that it was actually in the strongest financial condition it has been in years and that it intends to pay its creditors in full. Multiple witnesses actually confirmed this during the trial, including Wayne LaPierre himself. And so based on all of this, based on this inconsistency, the judge presiding over the trial concluded that the primary purpose of the bankruptcy was to avoid potential dissolution. And as a result, he dismissed the case. He basically claimed that that is not what bankruptcy is for. You can't just file for bankruptcy in order to avoid legal challenges. But the problem for the NRA is that during the 12 day hearing, it actually confirmed many of the allegations in the New York general suit. You see, Tish James accused LaPierre of using the NRA to enrich himself and his friends without the knowledge of the NRA's board of directors. During the bankruptcy trial, LaPierre admitted taking free yacht trips from NRA vendors, flying only private jets, securing a $17 million contract to be paid to him even if he left the organization, and employing an assistant who stole $40,000 from the NRA in order to pay for her son's wedding. That assistant still works at the NRA. You know, that's just not the way a nonprofit tax exempt organization is supposed to operate. And as one board member told the bankruptcy court, I believe that the management is corrupted and that the board is corrupted. I don't see anything there that is salvageable. That pretty much sums it up, right? So where do we go from here? Well, first, there's the possibility of criminal charges. Did I mention that during the bankruptcy trial, the current NRA president actually admitted to shredding documents in order to avoid handing them over? In fact, LaPierre himself has told associates that he fears ending up in an orange jumpsuit. We'll have to wait and see how all of this plays out, but what we know for sure, is that the gun lobby is weaker than it's ever been. And that means that we have to fight like hell to get our lawmakers to pass life-saving community investments and tighter gun restrictions now, this year. Our lives depend on it. 